in the angular application that we are working on we are having a form and by using that form we are adding some books and we are using a service to store those books but the problem is whenever we are refreshing the application then that instance of service is gone and we are losing the entire data the permanent solution to avoid this problem is using a database so let's understand how this concept will work let's assume that this is the angular application that we are using on the left hand side and here is the database as of now in this angular application we are storing the data in a service and that service is available inside this angular application we can avoid this problem completely by storing the data of the books in a database whenever data is required we can read it from the database and whenever we want to add a new book we can also add it in this database but the problem over here is that the angular application cannot interact with the database directly there must be something called api in between this database and the angular application and the angular application will interact only with this api and this api will interact with the database now the technology of this api can be anything it is irrespective of angular it can be node.js it can be dotnet it can be php it can be java or any other technologies which are applicable for the api work now what will happen this angular application will interact only with this api and this communication is possible by using the http protocol angular provides a great support for the http communication and we will use all those concepts over here and to work on this http communications we need an api project and we need a database so first in this video let's create a new api application by using the dotnet core and create a database in the sql server to create the web api i will be using dotnet core and here i'm using the visual studio this is the latest one 2022 and here I can click on this create new project on this list you can choose this ASP.NET Core Web API click on next let's give a meaningful name here I'm writing book store API and just click on this next button I'm using the .NET Core 6.0 no authentication is required configure for HTTPS use controller ok and we are just enabling the support for this open API click on this create button and over here we are having the project in dotnet core we are having the blank web api application over here and we have to work on the books so we can create couple of models over here so i'm just going to create one book model in this application let's create a new folder with name models and let's add one class over here here i'm writing book model click on this add button and in this model we will have a couple of properties we can get the properties from this particular place first one is the id let's create them quickly second is the title so i will use a string over here third is this total pages it is of number type for number we can use the integer and here is the author so let's avoid this author because we will use this author's property this one then we have this price price okay and this price is a model so again we can create one more class over here so let's create first this price model and over here i can create one class right click choose this add one more class price model add, and there will be two properties in this one so first is currency and the second one is value so this is the currency and the second is the value the type of this currency should be string like this and if you are working with the dot net then it is recommended to use the first letter in the caps cool let's go back over here and for this price this time i will be using the price model upgrade these also because we have to write it in the caps title total pages this is price cool now what all properties do we have is published it is a type of boolean next is this published on so this is a date let's use the date time next we have this authors 
and let's use one more property over here for the authors this authors is again a list of all these strings but let's assume that i want to create one model with name authors over here because there can be more than one property in that author so let's create one model for this one here i'm writing author model and let's add few things over here first is the id id of the author this one then we have full name and at the last let's add one more property let's say it is address cool so we are having only three properties in this author model and it is time to use this author model over here in this book model and because there can be more than one author in a book so here we are using a collection and i'm using a list over here now what we have done we have created only three models in this application first is this book model and it is having a couple of properties then there are two more models this is the author model and this is the price model and we are using the type over here let's update this published on name also cool so we are done with the changes for the models now it is time to add a new controller let's go to the controller folder right click on this one choose this add click on this controller and choose the api from this left hand side and here i am using this template api controller with actions using entity framework cool let's click on this add button and here it is saying that choose your model class the model class because the parent is the book model so i'm using that book model over here data context class we do not have any kind of context class as of now let's create one so here we are having book store api context we are okay with this name click on this add button and this is the name of our controller so let's remove this models from here we will have this book controller or the books controller and let's click on this add button this will take some time because it will install a couple of nuget packages because now we are using the entity framework and based on all those selections first the system will install all the required packages and then it will generate the proper files we got an error in this scaffolding that there is no primary key in this price model so i have added one new property with name this id okay say all the changes and let's try it again click on this controller go to this add choose this controller here the required class is this book model and we do not have it create a new one click on this one cool okay and remove this model part books controller click on this add and here you will notice that we are having couple of files the first one is this books controller and there are so many methods over here this is the api basically the routing then the books and then we are having all the methods this one is the get method to get all books and then we are having this get book by id so many things are there we will have a look on this one in just a bit but before that let's see what else we have over here we are having a new folder with name data in this data folder we are having this context class this context class is inherited from the db context and this is the concept from entity framework core and here they are having this book model and basically all the setup is there now if i go to this app settings file here you will notice that we are having this connection string as well and it is pointing to a server local host ms sql local db so it is pointing to a local db then this is the name of the database and they are using this windows connection so let's update the name of our database so book store api data remove this dot we will use this book store api data now i do not want to use this local db because we have already installed the sql server in this system so here i will be using this dot okay let's open the sql server here it is and let's connect to the local host database so here i'm using the dot if you have installed the system in your local system either you can use the local host or you can only use this dot windows authentication is there click on this connect button and open this database folder as of now there is no database here with this name books store api data just save all the changes and let's just build this application just to verify do we have everything in place or not so i'm just clicking on this rebuild the build is successful cool now let's just remove this cs process file okay now we have to create a migration over here and for that we have to go to this tools nuget package manager and this package manager console 
on this package manager console we have to write a command which is add migration give some space and the name of your migration so here i'm writing init db hit the enter button this will add a migration in this application okay so it is done let's see what it has done here you will see we are having one more folder within a migrations and in this migrations we are having two file so this is the init db this is basically the name of the migration and this is the snapshot of the database cool let's not worry too much about this one and again open that package manager console and over here let's run one more command the name is update database just hit the enter button now what will happen over here whatever migration script we have in this application based on those files it will generate a new database in our system and it will get the connection string from this app settings so this is the connection string that i'm using if you want to create this database at some other place then you have to provide a proper connection string over here and this system will pick the connection string automatically this command is successful let's see what we have in the database so this is the management studio and just to refresh the changes this time you will see we are having one more database over here cool let's expand this is the tables so there are four tables actually over here this is the book model this is the author model and this is the price model and here we are having this one it is the migrations history so if you will make any change in your application and you are just updating the database multiple times then this table will have a history of all those changes let's see what we have in this book model in this book model we are having a couple of columns so this is the id title total pages price id is published and this published on okay uh, in this price model we are having a couple of columns id currency and this okay so i have just misspelled it it was value not this value go to this application again open that price model this is something that we have done wrong let's update it value save the changes and let's just fix this value so here i'm writing add migration again and this time updated property migrate it hit the enter button and before that let's see what we have in this migration history so right click on this one and choose this select top thousand rows so there is only one single row over here okay this is successful now let's update the database build is successful hmm that is done now let's just refresh the changes in the column this time you will see we are having this value this is how you can update the changes in your database and if i will execute this command again click on this execute button you will see we are having two entries over here this was the first one and this is the second one updated property because we have written this command over there and this is basically the time so it is first is year 2022 then the month then the date and then the time cool now without doing anything else let's just run this application by pressing either f5 or clicking on this button and here you will see that this dotnet core is providing us a proper ui so we are having this ui from the swagger and this is because we have checked that open api checkbox and we are getting the details over here so here you will see we are having a couple of schemas but we are much interested in this one so this is the get api for all the books if i click on this try it out so basically this swagger is a kind of interface where we can call our api if you want to call the api then you have to use this url api books and this is the type of get so this is basically the format and this is the sample response for this particular api click on this execute button as of now there is no book in our database that is why we are getting the response as a blank this is the url to get a list of all the books and here we are having this response body it is 200 and everything is good so far now let's talk about this post also so in this post if i want to click on this try it out so this is the sample that we have to send in the request okay let's try it out so let's not pass the id because it is auto generated so i'm just removing it from here and then my first book cool the currency is this usd and it is let's say it is 10 is published is true and this is the date full name here i'm writing this address let's say it is india 
so this is the change that we have done and let's put 10 over here cool now let's click on this execute button and here you will see that we got the response code that is 201 it means it means the record has been created successfully in our database and this is the response body let's verify the changes in the database also let's right click on this book model and use this select top thousand rows we are having one record over here and let's see what we have in this authors right click select top thousand rows this one is also working fine about the price cool so we are having all the values in the database now let's try to call the get api the first one this one and it must return the details of all the books as of now we are having only one book so we must get it and here you will see that we are having the response but unfortunately we are not getting the authors and the price let's fix this problem in the api project so open this visual studio and go to the controller file so this is the books controller and this is and this is the api to get all the books now over here we have to make some changes and we have to include these two children here i'm writing dot include x dot authors and let's include the price as well so here i'm writing include x is equal to x dot price model this price now let's just run this application again and let's verify this time let's click on this all books click on this one try it out hit the execute button and this time you will see we are getting all the details so this is the price the id is one currency is usd values 10 and this is the list of all the authors because we have added only one single author that is why we are having this one author we can also add multiple authors in this application so basically we have created a couple of apis related to our books and this is for the get all list this is to add a new one so this is for get one book using the id this is basically to update a book and this one is to delete the book if you are a front-end developer and do not know anything about these apis then do not worry ask your team lead about the apis and he will provide you the apis because there will be someone else in your team for the backend development but if you are a full stack developer then you must know how to work on the apis as well now it is time to use all these apis in our angular application